So I think the question that many of our Muslim brothers and sisters are wondering, who are listening, maybe some of our non-Muslim friends as well, who are wondering is, does this coincide or can it coincide with our beliefs as Muslims? Okay. Evolution. Do we believe in it as Muslims? Okay. So we just need to step back a few steps before we answer that question. Anything in science, there may be times that something in a scientific journal or a scientific theory or scientific conclusion, yeah. it may contradict Islam and there may be things which confirm with Islam. So right? what do you do then? Exactly. What do you do? Now, I'm going to give a general point and then we'll home into evolution. Okay. Right. A general point is this. We have reasons why we believe the Quran is the word of God. Yes. We have separate, and you guys are going to do episodes on that, God willing, you know, on this issue, why Quran is true, this issue, why the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a true messenger of God. So you have evidence for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, of course, have evidence on the other side too. Now, when you have two pieces of evidence which contradict, they both can't be true. So what we as Muslims believe is that science is a source of knowledge, yeah. but at best, it's not going to give you concrete, absolute knowledge. Quran is a source of knowledge which we know with certainty is absolute and true. Now, there may be times in which the Quran confirms science. There may be times in which the Quran contradicts what science is saying. As long as we understand that the reality is God's word and God's world, which science tries to discover, in reality, we know they can't contradict because God revealed the Quran yeah. and God also revealed not re revealed so he created the world the world yeah so the Quran is God's word yeah but the, wor can't contradict. the, the world is also God's word because yeah. God said be and it is yeah so we know that that contradiction must be internal it's not out there in reality so something's being misunderstood somewhere. yeah so Something, there's a yeah. there's a really good example which is a case in point right okay me and you we are sitting here, we but, are. Let, but let's go back 60 years, just 60 years. I wasn't here. Yeah. So imagine we... Were you, were we, you here? <laughs> imagine we go back okay. 60 years, 70 years, yeah. and we're both sitting down and we're actually doing a radio show instead of this podcast. Now, at this time, the world has a... Cons the, sorry, the, the scientific world has a consensus. It has a consensus on the idea that the universe is eternal. Meaning the universe has no beginning and no end. Okay. And this is what physicists believed. That was consensus. That was a consensus. So they yeah. believed with certainty that the universe is eternal. This was known as the static state theory or model, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, what basically happened is this. That idea completely contradicts the Quran because that idea says the universe has no beginning. And in the Quran it's clear the universe has a beginning. Allah is the one that Allah is the one who created the universe, yeah. right? So according to that, Doesn't the, the universe always right? existed. Yeah. So it, that's that's a much stronger argument against God than evolution was because the universe has always been here, so there's no need for God. Okay. Right? Evolution, even the even evolutionists would say there was a beginning, right? Yeah. But with the universe, there's no beginning. Like so, the most direct you can imagine contradiction between. The Quran and science is, is not evolution. It's actually what happened about 70 years ago. Okay. Because there's a direct contradiction. So then what happened? After a few decades, we discovered that the Big Bang model makes more sense of the data because new data came. And the scientific world then changed its mind that the universe actually has a beginning. Wow. Now. Just like that. Yeah, I mean, it took a long time. I mean, some of the scientists were not happy with it and it took a long time. Especially what's interesting is the Soviet scientists, yeah. the communist scientists, yeah. they didn't like it because it was an idea which was giving more air to religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. So they were the like the least likely to accept it. Yeah. Anyway, so there's a contradiction in the Quran, which later on is no longer a contradiction. Now, why did yeah. this happen? Because what science, the way science works is this. Me and you are scientists and we're, we're, we're scientists and we're trying to work out what is the color of swans. We're like, that swan's white, that swan's white, that swan's white. We've seen 500 swans. Okay. So we come up with the theory, all swans are white. white. In the future, we may discover a black, a black swan. swan. Mm. Therefore, our previous theory, all swans are white, goes out the window. Down the bin. Yep. In the bin. So, 
in science you can always have a new con- new observation yeah. which can challenge your previous theory and that's why science isn't reliable as something individually i wouldn't say not reliable i would say that that's why it's beautiful because it can always change its conclusions okay yeah it's not something which i've made a i, I as a scientist I have see, made a conclusion yeah. and i'm going to stick to it forever i think i see where you're going here is where you're going science can always be changed and yep. it's always changing based on discovery research etc 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 but islam is not going to change yes but also something else which i was adding is that by looking at science yeah we look at it has weight because of these reasons okay we look at the quran and it has weight because of these reasons yeah so when we come across what looks like a contradiction either we've misunderstood the quran or we've misunderstood science or actually no those are the two possibilities either we misunderstood the quran or we misunderstood science so we need to look at it like this the quran has weight and so does scientific conclusions but the quran as a as a book we know that certain things that it says it may contradict science today but maybe perhaps in 100 200 500 years time science will revise its conclusions and that will be more in line with the quran yeah. it's not necessary that's going to happen in the future and this is why it's very important that if we understand the rhetoric the rhetoric behind evolutionary theory at a popular level yeah. and at an academic level is totally different when it came to say the universe having no beginning yeah there was a very clear powerful reason for that according to the scientific data later on we discovered it was wrong with evolutionary theory the way that we are taught it in schools in textbooks by popular writers like richard dawkins is it's as true as the shape of the earth is as true as there's a table in front of me but what's interesting musa is when you go and look at it academically they believe it's not as true as that they believe it's based on a probabilistic framework mm. and it has assumptions and there are disputes about its core ideas ah uh, okay within the within and these aren't within religious circles these are within secular academic circles okay so there's a big and the question we need to ask is why is there such a big difference between the public understanding and the academic understanding so let me give you an example right uh victor stenger famous militant atheist who passed away a few years ago he said the prospect that darwin's broad theory of natural selection is going to get changed in the future is just as likely as us finding out the earth is really flat like it's never going to happen <laughs>